The time has finally come for every single soul that stepped foot or paw into Shadowlands to deal with the Nathrius. However, with all the confusion this fight brings with it, learning how not to wipe your raid group is super important, which is exactly what this video is about. My name is Ivona, and if you're here for the first time, subbing to my channel is a great idea, as I do a bunch of super simple WoW guides for raids, classes, and collectibles, so if you're into that, you'll love it. When it comes to the Nathrius, it's important to note that this guide is made for LFR and normal difficulty, so if if you're looking for more challenge, you'll need some additional info. I also created guides like this for all the other bosses in Castle Nathrius, so you can check those out too if they're giving you trouble. The Nathrius fight is a three-stage one, where you'll be fighting him in two different rooms, so when you fall down at a certain point, don't panic, because that's where you need to be. Alright, so the first stage lasts from 100 to 70% HP, and there are some abilities that you need to be aware of. The first one is Inevitable, which makes the boss teleport to the tank if he's not in the boss's melee range. This can sometimes be taken as a time for Raid to regroup, but you shouldn't do it often as he hits the tanks hard when he does it. Then there's Feeding Time, which marks two players, which simply means they'll have to move away from everyone else to not cause damage to them. You know you're marked because you'll have a red arrow above your head and a circle around you, so just step away and all will be well. Then we have Ravage, which procs when our dear sir reaches 100% energy in his bar. The blade that's hanging out in the middle will mark the boss and deal frontal cone damage to everyone in the cone and it will leave a red pool thingy that you don't want to be in at all. It's a good idea to talk about the direction of Ravage before the pool, but if you're doing LFR that may not be a thing, so stay vigilant and when you notice it's happening move away and take no blame in the group wipe. The problem with this is that there will be more Ravages, and each pool occupies one third of the room, so make super sure you kill him before he covers the whole room, because that's a wipe. Also, the boss hits harder with each Ravage, so there's another reason to not allow that. There's also Burden of Sin, which is a 4 stack debuff that you'll receive at the pool. It deals a tiny amount of damage on its own, but it does have some funny interactions with other abilities, which is why you want to get rid of it. There's a stun called Blood Price, which happens throughout phase 1, when you'll fly into the air and get stunned, and whoever has the same number of burden stacks as you will receive shadow damage from you and will get knocked away from the boss, which is all really terrible. The way to counter this is by standing against the wall, aiming to not be thrown into the desolation pool, and as for getting rid of the stacks, there's Cleansing Pain ability. This is a blessing and a curse, as the boss will damage players in his frontal cone, but he will remove one stack of debuff. Not everyone should participate in this, as you don't want the whole raid group to go down to the same number of stacks, so if you see people set up to get cleansed, don't rush your way into the crowd. Also, when you do get cleansed, you'll spawn an ad which you need to kill off ASAP. The best way to deal with all of this at the same time is to divide the raid group into two and have one of the groups getting cleansed, but from what I've seen in LFR so far, people are getting getting pretty chaotic anyway, and not everyone knows they need to get cleansed, so that'll work to your advantage. Not the whole chaos part though, try not to encourage that. Okay, so your boss is at 70% HP, and instead of the second stage, there's an intermission. All red pools are gone, the boss gets into the middle of the room and pulls all of you towards him. Then he throws all of you to the edge of the room and slows you down. You need to hurry back in any way you know how, as you'll get killed off if you don't get into the boss's 16 yard rage upon the completion of March of the Pentin and cast. Also, you will not be able to use your abilities while running back, so just run 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 and forget about teleports, blinks and all that stuff. You can only use your spells before the intermission starts, so if you want to position a gateway, turn into a ghost wolf or anything like that, plan ahead of time. Once he stops casting, you'll get inside of a new room where you'll remain until the end of the fight. This is a good time to save the combat rest if you're a healer, as there will be players who die upon arrival as they didn't get back to the boss in time. If you have a healer who knows what they're doing, you'll be fine even if you die. Finally, there's phase 2, and now you also have to worry about Denathrius' sword called Rumornia. If you hit the sword, you'll also be hitting the boss, so try to do that as much as possible, and this is why it's good to have the sword near the boss, as it allows for them to be cleaved. The sword also teleports to the tanks that are far away, by the way. If you're hit by the sword, you'll get a Carnage debuff, which is a bleed, and this is a big deal for tanks, as they need to be switching taunts to not have too many stacks of Carnage. Remornia targets some players with Impale, and it pretty much means it's gonna charge into them and leave Carnage debuffs to anyone in its path. There's also Massacre, and that happens whenever Denathrius is at 100 energy, or resets upon reaching it. Remornia will go away, and there will be big giant red swords essentially cutting the ground 
around and it's your job to move away from the red lines. They're kind of unpredictable, so try to move whenever you see a red line under your feet and don't panic. Just move as little as possible to stay safe. There will be Crimson Cabalist ads as well during this stage, so just kill them ASAP to not get overflown by them. The ads that spawn on the platforms that are unreachable should be targeted by ranged players, as they're the only ones who have access to them, apart from some melee classes that have abilities like Leap, Shadow Step and things like that, but they may get stuck there, so make sure to pull them back somehow if they go for them. Denathrius also casts Racking Pain at the tank, which damages all players in the frontal cone, and it also damages adds, so tanks can use this to kill off the remaining adds while staying away from the raid group. He also casts Hand of Destruction, which pulls players to him and summons a copy of himself that explodes after 6 seconds. That will kill you all if you're near, so the further you are, the easier it is to survive. The mirrors inside of the room are actually teleports and are pretty handy when it comes to this, so if the boss is near one of the mirrors, you can use it to go to the other side quite easily. Even when you get the boss to 40%, phase 3 begins, and it's important to kill all adds before that happens, as they will reduce healing by a lot. Phase 3 is a DPS check, and that's where you need to nuke the boss. Denathrius casts Indignation, and there will be a big ring around the platform that disables or mirrors. If you're in the ring, you'll be getting damaged, so you just get out of it as much as you can. Remornia is gone, but Denathrius now has it, so he deals more melee damage. He also knocks back the raid and deals damage to everyone with Shattering Pain, and here you need to make sure you're not too far away from the boss so you're not thrown into Oblivion or the Anima Circle area. However, there is still the Hand of Destruction, making it necessary to be far away, so it can be a bit confusing to figure out where you need to be and when, but hopefully you'll avoid both lethal damage and getting thrown off the platform. Denathrius also marks some players with Fatal Finesse, and if you have the debuff, move away from everyone else so that you don't damage them. Finally, there's Sinister Reflection, spawning an ad upon the boss reaching 100% energy, casting either Ravage or Massacre before it despawns, just a cute little reminder of the previous stages. Ravage now becomes a problem again, so you need to do everything you can to kill the boss before it happens, as you'll run out of platform once again. And that's all I got for you. It sounds like a lot, but the thing about LFR is that you most likely won't notice some of these abilities. Still, it's good to learn them and not to take blame for your group's demise, and if you're doing normally, you do need to know these, so there you go. If this guide has you less confused than you were before watching, leave this video a like and make sure to sub for more good stuff, and of course the next raid's super simple strategies. I had a lot of fun with How Not To Wipe series, and I'll definitely see you in the next raid with some more cool guides. Thank you for watching and good luck saving Revendreth from this guy. Bye bye!